Hello there, and welcome back to Space Lab. In this tutorial, we're going to cover all of the reverb parameters that define the character of the room where you're placing your objects. These parameters can be found at the top of Space Lab when in reverb view, and also in the room character tab in the display area. This is the first tab in the area just below the main controls. This video is part of a larger ongoing series about Space Lab and 3D audio production, so if you haven't done so already, please subscribe and hit that bell icon so you can stay up to date with the latest news, tips, and tricks. The parameters at the top of this page are grouped into five sections, room character, modulate, tail, equalizer, and mixing. Let's go through these one by one. The room character section contains three knobs for adjusting your virtual room's width, length, and height in meters. Notice that your virtual room's dimensions are visually reflected in the 3D top and side panner views when in the sources view. If you make adjustments to the length, width, and height of your room, the room in the sources view will update accordingly. The four buttons under complexity select the size of the reverb generating matrix and directly influence the perceived density of the reverb tail. Selecting higher values here gets you denser reverb tails but has a higher impact on your CPU. The modulate section contains knobs to set the frequency and amplitude of the reverb modulation. Turning up the amplitude knob results in stronger modulation. The enable button lets you switch modulation on and off. Next, we have the tail section. The big knob adjusts the reverb time for all nine frequency bands together. These bands can also be adjusted individually on the room character tab in the bottom of the display if you like. Enable button lets you enable or disable the reverb tail. If the diffuse earlies button in the room character tab is switched off, you can still hear the first reflections even if the reverb tail has been switched off. We'll cover diffuse earlies in detail a little later in this video. Next up, we have the equalizer section where we can shape the sound of the reverb tail with a bank of sliders. In 
the mixing section, you'll find the usual knobs for pre-delay and dry-wet mix. These knobs set the pre-delay time in milliseconds and the mix between the wet and dry signals. There's also a novel control called Wet Gain. This knob gives you additional control over the volume of just the wet signal. Now, ideally, dry and wet should have about the same loudness level when the dry-wet knob is set to the 12 o'clock position. But if not, you can adjust this using the Wet Gain knob. The wet and dry buttons below let you easily switch just the wet or dry part of the reverb on or off. This is very handy in cases where you just need Spacelab's panning features without the reverb or vice versa. The button is lit when the output is enabled. The first tab in the bottom display is called Room Character, and it contains a variety of parameters for designing the overall sound of the reverb. First we have the Density knob, which lets you control the level of diffusion in the reverb. Then we have a bank of 12 buttons shown under Matrix Seed. These are 12 options for how diffusion of density values greater than zero affect the reverb sound. Now the mechanics behind this are too complex to be explained in this video, but the main takeaway is that each of these options has a slightly different diffusion sound. The thing to do here is just to check them out and select one according to taste. If the room modes button is switched on, the reverb is optimized to exactly simulate the physical dimensions of your virtual room. This means the reverb sounds more real but will contain resonant frequencies due to the room's dimension, so-called room modes. If room modes is switched off, then the algorithm is optimized toward maximum smoothness, but you get less pronounced room character. To make the difference as obvious as possible, let's create a small cube-shaped room. If diffuse earlies is switched on, the early reflection pattern of each object is further smoothed by an extra run through the reverb matrix. This results in a wider spatial distribution for the early reflections, but less pronounced spatial directions.
It's also important to mention that diffuse earlies has to be switched off if the parameter direction focus on the object rendering tab is going to be used because both of these work in opposite directions. Diffuse earlies enhances spatial distribution of the early reflections, while direction focus emphasizes early reflections in the direction of the objects, thereby reducing spatial distribution. Please check out the object rendering tutorial for more information about direction focus. The link is in the description. On the right side, there are nine faders for adjusting the reverb time, one for each frequency band. And that's it for this video. Please make sure to subscribe and hit that bell icon to be notified of any updates. Thanks for watching and happy mixing.